Hello everybody and welcome to another Beans, Bags and Handicrafts Company's uh, tutorial. Um, we're continuing through the Shambhala Designs Library. Uh, Sammy asked me to do the Chloe bag. It is her most recent release. She's got it released in many different languages as well. It's super cute. It's a shoulder bag. Uh, it could be a crossbody bag, I guess, if you made your strap in uh, a little bit longer than what it says. Um, but yeah, it's it's super cute. So what I'm using for materials is for this front panel here, I'm actually using a cork fabric and then I'm using a vinyl for the rest of it. I've made my, you'll see, I'll make my own uh, vinyl piping for this. Uh, we're going to attempt to do a thumb lock. I've only done a thumb lock one other time, so uh, it'll be nice to, <laughs> it'll be fun to go through and uh, learn the thumb lock together. The only thing I did different is I couldn't get my hands on some metal strap connectors. So I went ahead and I just made my own. So when we get to that point, uh, you can either make your own strap connectors or if you were able to find some metal strap connectors, you will just follow the manufacturer's instructions and how they will go on. Uh, interfacing, I use uh, Biani Soft and Stable Foam for the exterior pieces. I use Fashion Fuse um, that I get from cleanersupply.ca. It's very similar to SF101 and Woven Fuse. I find for density, it's somewhere in between the two. Um, definitely lighter than Woven Fuse 2. All of those interfacings would be perfectly fine for this. Um, instead of foam, you could probably use Decoville Light. I do not use Decoville Light mainly because I'm in Canada and it's very expensive up here and it's uh, hard to uh, find places that actually sell it. So, and I like a loftier bag, so I actually prefer the foam. But yeah, if you wanted, you'll definitely want either foam or a deck of a light in there, so the bag will have uh, it'll stand up for you. Uh, there's not very many pieces, which is great. I think this is going to be a fun, quick project, and I'm excited to get started. So here we go. Okay, so we're going to be putting the thumb lock onto our front main panel. So what you'll need is you'll need your female part of your thumb lock, the washer plate that goes on the back, a piece of scrap Peltex, and your pattern piece. So what this calls for is on the pattern piece, you're supposed to match up uh, your thumb lock. My thumb lock is quite a bit different shape than what the pattern calls for, but it's important that we have that centered. So how I'm gonna find that center is, you lay your pattern piece over top of the main panel like this, and then you take a choco or a wash away pen or whatever you have, and right where this little line with the arrow is on the pattern, you're just gonna put a little dot right there because that's gonna be the center where you're gonna want your lock to be. So it's just a little teeny tiny white, right there, white dot. And what that's gonna do for me is, on my washer, there's a little dot there which is the center of my washer piece. So you wanna take your female part of your thumb lock and find out how it is going to sit in that washer. So this one looks like it's going to go into, see here, see, it's gonna go into the third slots from that little circle there. It'll go there and it'll go there. So we know, I know that this third one down from the circle and that third one up from the circle is where I want to be able to make my little slits. So I'm gonna push this over top and in that little circle is where I'm going to center my white dot like that. Okay, and you're gonna to wanna to eyeball it and make sure it is straight because you don't wanna have a crooked thumb lock. So I'm just gonna lay this down here to try to find my center and make sure that my plate isn't crooked. you may have an easier way to do this. <laughs> this is the way I am doing it today. Okay, so I think that looks quite straight. Probably grab a piece of paper. 
in the top. Or a ruler if I had one. Let's do that. Oh, I did pretty good. So I've got the quarter inch mark for the four and a half mark up here. And I'm just making sure that that's nice and straight against the ruler there. So I know that that's straight. Okay, and then once you have that straight, you're gonna take your marker again and right, put a line of chalk or marker or whatever right in that, wherever your center pieces were going to be. One, two, three, mine was the third slot down. Okay, so now I have, if you can see it there, I have my center mark and then I have my two lines where I'm going to do my cut. And that's where the little feet things are gonna go through like that. So then take a seam ripper. I just use a little Fisker's X-Acto knife. Careful not to cut your hands and just cut slits right on those lines that we made. Not on the circle, just on the lines. And then also on your piece of Peltex, all I do is lay this on top and I just stick my little knife through it where same as what was on there. And then what we're going to do, if you were using fabric, I'm using cork so it doesn't fray. If you're using fabric, I take a little fray check and just put it over top of those little slits. And then we're just going to stick that in like that. Eyeball it to make sure it looks straight. I think it looks pretty good. Flip it over, take your Peltex piece, find where your little slits were there, like that. Still looking good. And then finally take your washer and then push them in. Before you do it super tight, make sure it's sitting where you want it to because once we do this, you're not gonna be able to move it. But I think it looks pretty straight, I think. So push it down. Make sure they're good and solid. Make sure this is tight. You can see it's really tight up on there, so we're good. And then what I do after that to protect my liner and just to give it a little more stability is I take a little bit of duct tape or Gorilla tape and I just put it over top of that. And just like that. That wasn't too hard. So I hope it's straight, it looks straight. So there is the female part on our front panel. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put my nameplate on here and then we'll come back and we will do the piping. Okay, so once you've made your piping or you're using some already uh, store-bought piping, what you wanna do is make sure that your piping is about a quarter of an inch from that raw edge, which if you made your own pop, uh, piping and you followed the instructions in the pattern, it will be. So then what you wanna do, this is the back panel I have finished and I have installed the piping and it looks pretty darn good. So I'll show you how I did that with the front panel. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to mark one and a quarter inches from the top corner here. So we're measuring this corner here and we're just gonna put a little line with some chalk. Like that. And on the other side. And a quarter. And that's where our piping is going to start and stop. So figure out which side of your piping you want to be showing. So, cause if it's going this way, the underside is going to be showing. So the side that, your right side of your piping, you want to be face down. So it's right sides together with our main panel. Which side do I like better? I think this one. And then you're gonna take and match the end of the piping with that line right there. And then start pinning it around or clipping it around. Maybe I want the other side. I think I want the other side. Yeah. Okay. 
Now my vinyl is quite thick, so I'm going to have to put notches to spread the fabric out around the corner. Because if you see here, it is not going to go around that corner nice and flat. So as I come to the corner, what I'm going to do is just take my scissors and for about the length where there's going to be corners, um, I'm just going to do stitches not quite to that stitch line, just little snips. And it's just going to help it lay flatter. So if you see here, I put the snips in and see how I can put it nice and flat against. It just helps spreads it out and evenly distribute it a little bit better to turn that corner. Because it's, it's a straight piece and we're trying to make it round, which doesn't seem like it should be possible. Need to do those little steps, continue along the bottom. Okay. And come to another corner, so I'm going to do my snips again. If you have pinking shears, you can use that along here too. That would help as well. I have them, but they're really dull. I need a new pair. Okay. So make it hug that corner like this. And I can see I cut my piping a little bit long because it's going to go past that one and a quarter mark. So I'm just going to trim it like that. Okay, so now that we have that, we have it clipped all the way around. Now, one thing we want to do is right where that line was, I don't know how I'm going to show you this. Um, you kind of want to pull the top of this over so it is almost off of the edge like that. So just where that line is, you want to clip that. And what this is gonna do is it's going to veer it off into the seam allowance. So the piping kind of gets tucked into the seam. So you wanna do that on the other side. So you have it flush there, just kind of push this end down like this. So it's right on the edge there and clip it in place like that. So they're kind of turned out sideways. It's the way it looks on the back. Okay, so then what we want to do next is now our this is this bag is a quarter inch seam allowance. So what I do is I top, start at the top with my quarter inch, and then I'm going to sew down. Let's see if you can see this here. Okay. Make sure that that piping is veered off. Start sewing. You can use a basting stitch for this. And it's going to look like you're missing the piping, but you're going to follow the edge of the bag like you're basting all the way down that quarter of an inch. And then it's going to eventually turn it and keep following it down a quarter of an inch. So now I'm basting the piping onto this with the quarter inch seam allowance. And I am actually following my stitch line from when I made the piping because I know I did that at a quarter inch already. So it just gives a little bit of a visual. Again, you can use a zipper foot on this if you wanted to. I apologize for my barking dog. My husband is home from work and she gets excited. So. Take your corners nice and slow. You want it to have a really nice shape. Again, I am so sorry for my barking dog. 
feel in there? Make sure there's no... Okay, I think I got the bark out to stop. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> she's a black and tan coon hound, and she's excited. It's not my husband, it's my son that's home, and she just the same time. So keep following that stitching line all the way around. Corner, go nice and slow. Okay, and then when you get to the other side, it's the same thing. So, see how this is veering off this way? So we're going to keep going quarter of an inch and it's eventually going to go right off at the piping and the end of the piping is going to be in the seam allowance. So just follow the edge of your bag at a quarter inch, having that veered off like that. I always like to do a little bit of a back stitch right where it disconnects. And we're not going to trim that excess away just yet. We're going to do that after we've connected everything. All right. So that's how it looks. It's veered off. You can see on the back, see how it's veered off. And then you can kind of pull it up. If you fold it back this way, you're gonna see how beautiful that piping is gonna be. Okay, I don't know if my dog's under control yet, but it'll be what it'll be. So now that we've got the front and the back panel done with the uh, piping and everything, now we're gonna work on our flap. So if you are doing woven, I'm not, I'm using vinyl, you would have cut your pattern out on the dashed line. You would have sewn all the way around with a quarter inch seam line, it's left the top open, turned it, pressed it. We're just doing with vinyl. So the pattern called for cutting two flaps out, but to make them absolutely perfect, what I do is I cut out one flap and then I cut out a piece just a little bit larger than that. And I will show you why. So you wanna take some glue, or some double-sided tape. Put on the back of the flap. Try to keep it out of your seam allowance if you can, especially if you are using um, a domestic machine because this tape will definitely gum up your needle. This tape I'm using right here, especially, this is really sticky. Thick that tape as well. Oops, am I missing my garbage can? Then you're going to take that flap and you're going to stick it onto the big piece like this, nice and flat. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to go a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And I just use a four and a half, um, almost like a uh, basting or top stitching because this is going to show. All the way around. When it comes time to turn, make sure your needle is down before you turn. Continue along. down, adjust, and then take the curve nice and slow to get a really nice top stitch. Make sure it's laying nice and flat. Oops.
this very top doesn't matter so much because it will be so little I might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I haven't read that far into the pattern. And because I am using a poly blended thread, I do have to burn it off so it doesn't fray because this will not be hidden in a seam anywhere. Okay, so touch. And then take your scissors and we are going to trim it around to an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So this is why I do it on here because sometimes when you cut something out you can't get them exactly the same this way they will be exactly the same so i'm going to go ahead and cut an eighth of an inch seam allowance through both layers an eighth of an inch away from the stitching Now, because I'm leaving my vinyl raw, I have on order some edge coat from Tandy Leather, but it hasn't arrived yet. So I'm gonna have to paint my ends after the fact. I'm gonna still do the purse and then carefully just do my edge coat later. I'll show you why you would probably wanna do edge coat unless it doesn't bother you. It's fine to leave it as well. They won't fray. So there we go. We've cut an eighth of an inch all the way around. You can decide which side you like the most. But see how the ends are all white from cutting the vinyl? That's where I would take my edge coat point paint and go all the way around. So I'm probably going to have to do that after the fact because it hasn't arrived yet. So that is our flop and how I do that. So they're exactly the same. Okay, so now we have our piping on. I actually went ahead, I had a, a marker. I don't have edge coat, but I have a t-shirt marker with this permanent marker that I just went around these raw edges and did black. And I think when my edge coat comes, I'll probably carefully um, reapply that. So our next step is we need to attach the flap to the back panel. So you want to decide which is going to be the right side of your flap. I just look at the stitching and I mean both sides look good but I think this is my favorite side. So we're going to want both right sides up. So what we want to do is measure down from the top here one and a half inches. And that's about there, I think. And I'm just going to use my Chaco to give, my, whoops, give myself a guide there so I know where I'm placing it. Right there. And then we're going to take our flap and put it down on top. Is this the side I want to use? Yeah, it is. Now, if I had been smarter, you can see here, this one's nice and pointy here. This side is a little more rounded from how I cut it. But this pointy part, we want to, it will should sit, if it's centered, right with that there. So this one is where that pointy part would have been if I hadn't rounded it off by accident. And line it up with that line. But it gives you a guideline of where about that should be. <clears throat> so first, what I should have done, let me grab my tape. I am actually going to take my quarter of an inch double-sided tape and just put it along that bottom there to help it stay in place. And I'm choosing the quarter inch because we're going to do a quarter inch top stitch along there and I don't want the tape to be showing if you were to look and see. Because this tape doesn't wash away like Grit's Wash Away Wonder Tape. Okay. Carefully center it. You could also find the center of the bag if you wanted to, but I'm just going to use those ends kind of as 
looks straightish to me. I can measure, so that's about one inch there, and that's about one inch there. So I'm just measuring from where the flap ends to the end and seeing how centered I am and it's looking pretty good. One inch, okay. Centered good enough for me. I think. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna do just over top of this stitching, I think we're gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna follow that same stitching. That's everywhere. So it looks just like that. So this will be the back of the bag and then this will be how the flap comes over the front. So what I'm gonna do now off camera is I'm just gonna put a rivet in this corner and a rivet in this corner, just to give it a little bit, it'll give it a little bit of bling and a little more stability. It could probably be fun to put a couple more across here, but I'm just gonna do the two for now. I'm gonna go do that and then I'll be back. Okay, now that we have that done, actually, I will show you. So I've gone and I've installed the rivets just into these corners here. Um, makes it look pretty and it just gives it that little bit more of stability. So you can put that aside for now. And then the next part is we are going to put our connectors to our gusset. And as I said, I couldn't find um, uh, metal, metal connectors in stock for me to be able to bring them today. So I just made my own. Um, so you'll follow the manufacturer's instructions on how to install your uh, metal connectors if you've got them, or you can make your own like I did. But I will show you how to mark where you're going to place them. So on our pattern piece, there's this little line here that gives us an idea of where we want our connector. I always put a little slit in there for that reason, for the reason of you can lay the pattern piece down and then you can just go into that slit like this with your chalk and just draw a line there so you can see where you're going to put, can you see that? That, where you can put your connector. And you would do that on both sides. Like that. And then for my connectors, that's where you would install it, where the top of the connector is right at that line, like that, and it's nice and centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna stick these on. I'm doing them just like I do connectors on all the other bags that I have done. Double-sided tape, stick them on. I'm going to take this to the machine and uh, top stitch across the top here and across the bottom, and then I'm also gonna stabilize it with a rivet. So make sure your connectors are pointed upwards, so where you're gonna be hooking uh, your shoulder strap on, you want that to be pointing towards the outside on both sides, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll come back to the next step. All right, so I have my side connectors on. This is how I've done it. I've covered the raw edge with one of these wonderful MLI bag strap ends. I just love them. And there's that other side. Again, I couldn't find the metal um, connectors to put them on. So this is how I did it. 
Okay, so the next step is we want to, I already did it on the main panels. I went and I notched the centers of my main panels and all you do is fold them in half like this, find that center and do either mark with a pen or do a quick scissor snip. We're gonna do the same with this. I'm gonna fold it in half like this, put the two short ends together, fold this in half. And then just do little center snips on both sides. And that'll just help us um, place our gusset more centered and more and evenly distributed and everything should be in its place. So you wanna make sure those snips are under what your seam allowance is, which is a quarter of an inch. Okay, so we're gonna take, we're doing the front piece first, match up those middle pieces, right sides together. So I'm gonna take those two notches and match them up like this. Use lots of clips if you need to, to hold everything in place. And I usually put about three clips first off like this. Mine is gonna be, you can see the layers, look how thick it's gonna be. And that's because I'm using this marine vinyl. Okay, and then you pull the other side up like this and match up our top sides like this. Remember, we're gonna have this sticking out. That is okay, that is what we want because we reared it off and line this up like this all the way down. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be a thick seam. Once again, when you come to this corner, if this isn't laying flat in the gusset, because again, it's a straight piece and we're trying to make it curve, just do little quarter, like one eighth little notches here just to help it lay flat. Make sure they're smaller than a quarter of an inch though. And that should help them lie together better like that. it nice and massage it so it you don't have any lumps or bumps or what have you. I'm using pretty stiff material so it's more going to be the challenge of how thick it is. Okay so that side's done. Do the same on the opposite side. I think this is gonna, I can already tell how pretty this is gonna be. This is gonna be for my mom. I hope she's gonna love it. So again, you're not matching this up with our piping here because we have that reared off. You're matching it up with the cork or the, the main panel on the bottom there. Oops. Oh my gosh, butter fingers. You could go and trim these off sooner, but I usually like to wait until after and I know everything's solid in place and then I just do a very slight trim because I don't want that popping out at any time or coming loose. I don't know if it would, but in my mind it would. See, this is what happens. See how it's tight? It looks like it won't fit there. That's what the snips are for, just on that corner. It just um, spreads the fabric out, or the vinyl out a little bit more, so it can lay flat right along that seam. and then it will go nice and flush. What's great about Shambhala patterns is many of her bags have the gusset type bottom and side like this. The Pandora goes together the same way, which is really nice. 
seems a little bit hard at first, but once you get used to doing it, it's good. So normally, when I'm sewing my sides on, I'd be doing it with the panel down like this and going this way. But I'm not gonna do that this time because I'm gonna push the gusset aside because I actually wanna follow my piping line here so I can get a nice tight, um, nice tight stitching so you can't see it through the piping. So I'm gonna just make sure I push that under, doing it a little bit backwards from how I usually do it, but I like to use that as my concentration point for how I'm sewing this on rather than quarter inch. Cause I don't wanna get that piping stuck in the stitching and then there's some piping that's into the seam allowance and it, it's just not pretty. So go ahead, this is, I'm gonna just double check. I'm sticking with the quarter inch. Na, 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 na. Okay. Yeah. okay. So we're going to start at quarter inch at the top here. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to follow that stitching that we had made when we attached the um, piping. It will make an awesome guy. Again, you may need to switch out to a zipper foot. You can feel where the piping is there too. And you want to make sure that your needle is staying on the this side of the piping and make sure everything's laying flat underneath. readjust make sure your needle is down make sure everything underneath here is nice and flat sometimes if you keep your hand on the inside it helps a lot because you can feel the fabric and make sure corners are always the hardest you want to make sure that you're keeping your seams together there needle down to adjust again I said I'm not really paying attention to this my seam allowance guide. I am just following that line from our piping stitching. get past your piping, just carry on all the way to the top with your quarter inch seam allowance. And then it's the moment of truth <laughs> to make sure we didn't stitch over any of that piping. So take it and turn it around, right side out like this. Oh my gosh, I love making my own piping. That is gorgeous. So you want to go and you want to double check that, oh, it turned out perfect. You don't want to see any of the stitches from when we were uh, making the piping. This you can't see any. Oh my gosh, I'm so pleased. Look how gorgeous that turned out. So you can see all the piping is around. There's no lumps and bumps or tucks. And this is why we rear off. Look how 
wonderful. This goes into the seam allowance and it just looks so very pretty. Oh, she's going to love this bag. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that with the back panel. You're going to do it the exact same way. So you're going to turn this back inside out. You're going to find your center of your back panel by folding it in half like so. Making a snip. And then right sides together, matching up all those notches, the same as we did before. Make sure you don't sew your flap into anything and turn it out and make sure your piping's good. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll be back uh, with the next step. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've sewn on my back panel so it's still inside out. At this point in time, you can go and you can trim back the piping so it's even. And then you want to turn it right side out to check everything is in place. Gosh, this is stiff. And there we are. So you wanted to make sure that your flap didn't get stuck in that seam allowance because this is what is going to come down and around and stick into there. So yeah, you just check everywhere. Make sure you're good everywhere for your piping. Make sure it didn't get caught. Make sure there's no seams. Look how beautiful that is. All right, so there we have it. And we will come back. And I believe we're going to be putting on the cross next. We will find out. All right, now we're to the part that I am the most nervous about, um, only because I've only ever done the thumb lock one other time, and it was on a blue cow bag, and I made a hot mess of it. It turned out okay, but I struggled with putting the thumb lock on. Um, so I think the way I'm going to do this is, it all depends on, this is the shape of my thumb lock here. It's from Emmeline Bags, but I wanna make sure I have it centered on this flap. And I mean, my cutting isn't necessarily perfect along there or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the seams of the bag, see here, and I'm just gonna match them up and put a clip there. And same with on this side. Like that so we know that that is how the bag will lie for center and then I'm gonna pull this down I'm gonna put my thumb lock in there already like that I'm gonna pull this down and see where this was go is going to lie I guess it doesn't really work with those clips we'll put the clips on the side here so they're out of the way just so we know those seams are together and what I'm doing is going to be centered um, so I'm going to pull the flap down and I'm going to stick it in where it is, like that, and adjust to see if I like the placement of it or what have you. And I think, I think that looks pretty good like that. So I'm going to hold that and I'm just going to take my Chaco and I'm just going to put marks where I have that clip in. So I can match it up so I know where I'm going to put it and then I can take it up. Okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it here, match my lines here, like that. So 
So yeah, just have where I had it sitting. Do I like that? I'll check it again. I want it to look perfect, so. Yeah, that'll be fine. This would also be really cute with a turn lock or even a magnetic snap. Okay, so we want to make sure that the the right side of the turn lock is facing up like this. So the right side of this is here and the right side like this. Okay. And then when you flip it over, there's these little marks here or little holes for screws. So we're just going to put some marks where we're going to be putting those screws. And just like that. Again, I just want to double check that that is going to look good. Okay, I think we're fine. Okay. So to install this, what I'm going to do, where is my glue? Follow your manufacturer's instructions or what have you. Again, when I'm doing my screws, I like to put my thread locker on them. Okay, I only need two of them. Just so they won't screw out. Okay. And I'm going to put... some glue on the inside here as well. Just a small little bead of it just to help out. And match that up with those little dots there. And then screw them in and hope for the best. <laughs> I don't know why I struggle with these so much, but I do. That's holding in, that's good. Little magnetic screwdriver is always handy. This is just one from the dollar store, but it just helps with these little, oops, little itty bitty screws. Kind of going straight. I'll go down as far as it'll go. I did it, and it is surprisingly so let's check it out yay I did it there is our front completely done that wasn't as scary as I thought it would be that turned out great so the only other thing that I did ahead of time for the exterior is I went ahead and I made my straps already um, or my strap um, I'm doing it a little different with this bag because this bag is for my mom and she doesn't want a shoulder strap. She likes to carry it on her arm. So I'm doing it. Uh, I'm not doing the clips on the sides. I'm actually going to put them in and rivet them. So I'm not using the swivel clips, but you'd make it the same way. Um, the shoulder bag, shoulder strap is actually done just like a crossbody strap. So if you want to see how I make a crossbody strap in my playlist, bag making my bag making 101 playlist uh, there are directions on how to install the swivel clasps and the um, and the uh, adjustable uh, strap for a crossbody strap which is what you would do for this so please check out that tutorial to learn how to make that strap or follow the instructions in the pattern but it, it is all explained there so that's pretty much the one thing I am 
doing differently with this bag is that strap. So I'm gonna get everything ready to do the lining and we are so close to being done. Okay, so the home stretch of the lining, it's actually, we're almost done. It's this, from here on, it goes faster. So off camera, I went ahead and I put in my interior zipper pocket. Um, I do it different than how Sammy does it in the pattern, just because I don't, I don't do the overlay and it's, the overlay is lovely, I'm just lazy. Um, I'll be honest, I always do my zippers this way. But in the pattern is included a tutorial on how she does do that, uh, overlay I may do I may do a tutorial on how it's done as well one day but uh, right now I'm just trying to work through all of the catalogs so um, if you want to see how I do it in my playlist bag maker making 101 I do have how to install a zipper pocket for early or easy turning um, so this pattern calls for turning through an opening in the bottom of the lining we're still gonna have the opening in the bottom of the lining and so it'll be exactly like how it is in the tutorial or in the pattern. But the only difference I do is when I do my pocket, I keep an opening in the zipper pocket. And then once I've turned the bag and we'll see when I do finish this tutorial, I reach in and I grab that uh, opening in the lining, pull it through the pocket and I sew it that way and then push it back in rather than doing a top stitch on the lining. Just mainly because my top stitching of the lining, I get this awful ridge. I'm just... I just, just know my forte of talent. So this is how I do it to, to keep it seamless and perfect. So yes, I went ahead and did that. So you um, will want to install that. I don't have that in here. And then the next step is really just the three pieces. So much like how we did the exterior, we're going to find the center of all of our pieces. So on the gussets, we're gonna fold it in half like this and then do a small clip or a mark with the pen or however you like to mark it that way. And then on your other pieces, you're going to fold them in half and do a small clip where the center of the bottom is. And same with this one. And I've already done this one here. So exactly like how we did it on the exterior, you're gonna match that center piece like this, match your notches. Now the lining, I always find it easier because you don't really see the lining if your stitching's not perfect. It's really not a big deal. Oops. And evenly distribute that all the way down to that center mark. If you need to do little clips, you can. I never do. I always get a little bit of a pucker, but it's the lining. I just get to the point where I want to start making the matching wallet. <laughs> so I get through the lining as fast as I can. Now, another thing, if you're new to bag making, sometimes it's easier to start with the lining because a lot of the time the lining goes together the same as the exterior and it gives you a feeling and a little bit of practice before you do the parts that are going to truly show. So if you've never done a, a gusset inside like this before, I would definitely start uh, with the lining so you can practice uh, that movement and how it goes together and not have to worry about there being too many mistakes that will be seen. So, so because we don't want to have a baggy lining, we're going to, once again, and this is again in most bags we do this, our seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. So we're going to start with a quarter of an inch and then about halfway down the gasset, we're going to move to half an inch all the way around. Then when we get about halfway up this side of the gusset, we're going to work our way back down to a quarter of an inch. The way we do that is to have a tighter fitting lining so it's not all 
floppy or loose inside, but at the top, we still need to keep the same, the same seam allowance as the exterior of the bag for when we do put it together. So it has to only have a quarter inch at the top. Maybe we will do that now. Inch. And about there, just start making your way out to half an inch. And I'm not leaving an opening in this one because this is the back of the bag because it has the zipper. I want to leave an opening in the front of the bag. Only if you're doing it my way of turning. It doesn't really matter which way or which side is left open if you're doing it as the pattern states. Let's see, now there's a little, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, and then here I'm gonna look back down to a quarter of an inch. But I do have a cutter there. That's all good. You can't even tell. Well, there's a pucker there, but you're not even going to be able to tell it's in the corner. All right, so make sure there's no holes anywhere. It's all good. And then you're going to go ahead and do the same. You're going to take the other piece. You're going to put it on top, and you're going to do the same with a quarter inch down to a half inch, back up to a quarter inch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera, and then we're going to put the whole bag together. I don't know if I forgot to mention the last segment. With this last panel we're putting on, we want to make sure we leave about a six inch opening we're turning. So make sure you just make a mark and you stop there, leave this open and then sew up the other side. Okay, so we have the lining all done. The pattern doesn't call for trimming the seam allowances. If you want to, I guess you could. If you do, make sure you do not trim the seam allowance by where this opening is. You'll want to keep that open. You don't want to have a small area to work with. Okay, so now we're going to put it together. So we want to make sure that the lining fabric or the lining, we have the zipper pocket at the back of the bag. For this, you're gonna take your flap and you're gonna fold it back like this. You don't want it sticking into the bag or anything like that, otherwise you're gonna sew the flap to the inside of the bag. You wanna make sure it's to the outside and out of the way. Make sure your side connectors are out of the way. You don't want anything getting stuck in your needle. So then you're gonna take the exterior and you're gonna place it into the lining. It is gonna feel tight because we did do that smaller seam allowance for the lining, but that is okay. Just squish her on it. Make sure your flap goes in and it is flat. You want, don't want that flap getting stuck in your sewing of the top seams. So make sure it is right down there. My vinyl is so thick, holy moly. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna match up these side seams here. And you're gonna clip all along the top. So match up those seams. See where they two meet there? Open them up if you can, otherwise I would nest them together. So I like to go around and do all of those seam matches first. That way I know that it's all centered properly. The next one here. So do those four seams first. Like that. Go around to the other side. little bit harder on the side that has that flat because there's a lot of thickness there to put inside the lining. So just kind of adjust as you need to and make sure everything is matched up good. Okay. Yep. 
Lots of clips. You can never use too many clips when you're doing this part. You don't want your layers coming apart. Okay. You kind of stretch and massage this. Make sure there's no lumps and bump. You want it to be nice and flush with each other. Distribute that fabric evenly. I am so pleased with this cork fabric. Oh my goodness. I just got it from Emmeline Bags. They have all sorts of really cute prints and colors. and It's a little bit more expensive, but it is so nice. Okay, so we have our lining and our exterior right sides together. I'm just going to check what our um, Okay, so we are sewing around the top with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, it looks like. So the way I like to do this is I actually find it easier to sew from the inside of the bag. You're going to have to, I'm going to start with the back because I'm going to have to be very careful not to get that flap in there and just because I'm very aware of it right now. So I'm start at the back. I like to do it from the inside, just push everything else out of the way. And start side. Remember needle down if you need to adjust it all. Be able to make sure that flap's not there. Oops, don't sew over your wonder clip like I just did. You kind of know when you're past the flap because you can see the other side of that rivet there. If you can open up the seams, do. If not, oh well, that's okay too. Just makes it easier for top stitching if your seams are open, it's a little less full. Needle down and adjust. Feel to make sure you're not going to have any lumps and bumps, that you're not getting anything in there that you shouldn't, like a, a rectangular ring or a connector. your clip like me again. I'm really hard on them under clips. They won't have a long life when they're with me. Needle down before adjusting. Massage out anything that could be a ripple or a tucker. Open up your seams if you can. Especially on the side with the foam, because that is where the majority of the bulk is, between the vinyl and the foam. There we did it. And then just go around to make sure. Where's that right there? Oh, okay. Make sure you've caught all layers. Check along there, see if you've got all layers, see so if she says to trim it. Okay. 
Okay, she doesn't say we need to trim it, so now we get to turn it. So you're gonna turn it through the bottom opening of the bag that we left right here. Always hardest at first because of the bottom. It might be a little tricky with that flap in there as well. Especially if you're using stuff as thick as I'm using. So it's because of this reason that I don't use fusible foam because I always find that when it came to turning the bag, if it wasn't fused properly, even though I do have a heat press, it just never seems to stay fused. And then you end up getting wrinkles and stuff or the glue comes off and it just is, doesn't look good. Once you get out the big parts, the rest comes quite easy. I don't know where that flap is in there. Hopefully I sewed it in right. We'll find out. It's the moment of truth. There it is. Yes, I did it right. Whew. Okay. So down through the opening. I'll first go through and make sure all along where we just sewed, and it's all good, that there's no holes. One looks good, that our, see how our seams are all matching up perfect. That's what we want. Then reach in through the hole and just on the exterior, push out and shape it a little bit. Make sure you get your corners nice and rounded. Wow, this turned out really nice. Very pleased with that piping. And then push the lining into the bag. We're not sewing up that bottom yet. So now what we want to do is we want to massage those seams down like that because we're going to top stitch all along the top here. So massage them down nice. A few clips to hold them in place. it's right here it gets really thick so that's where you kind of wanted to right where the seams are open them up if it was possible And keeping your flap out of the way you want to make sure you're not sewing the flap just this part above the flap Just like that. And I'm just going to quickly check to make sure my tension is good because these stitches show top stitching. So I just changed out my bobbin, so I want to make sure my top stitches are going to look good on both sides. And they are. Okay. So while we do this, I'm actually, because mine is so thick, I'm going to do this with the, a number five um, stitch length just because I am using this marine vinyl that's meant for boat seat covers and it is super thick and I am going to start at the back here. So make sure that flaps out of the way. Again I'm starting at the back just because I want to be very aware of that flap right now. 
Mm -hmm. We're just going to go around. Yeah, what does she want to top stitch at? With an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Again, make sure needles down when you have to adjust. to adjust. Sometimes it's a little harder with the smaller bag because not so much movement room here. Take it quick to clip. So you're only going through those front layers. And take it slow because this is the part that does show, especially on the front panel. It's functional and decorative. And I forgot to mention, always check to see that you have enough bobbin thread before you start top stitching because there's nothing more frustrating than you get part way through and then you realize you've top stitched the whole thing with no bobbin thread and you have to go through and do it again and then there's holes in your vinyl and I've done it, trust me, I've done it recently. <laughs> Top stitching is the number one reason I got a, this machine is because it used to stress me out so much. So you can see how lovely the top stitching is all the way around there. Let's make sure this one goes in nicely there. Perfect. So once you see that the top stitching is good, you're happy with it, now we can sew up the bottom. So we have this opening in the bottom and then if you're doing it the way in the pattern, you would just pull it out, press under half an inch like this, and then to hide the raw edges and then just sew a top stitch on there. So if I can never make that look good. Again, that's me. So what I do, that's why I leave the opening in the pocket. So I reach in the pocket, I pull it out like this, and I reach into the bottom of the bag and I find the opening here and I pull it up through the pocket like this. And then I can sew up that section there and I won't have that seam that I just can't get to look pretty at the bottom of the lining. 
again, it's the bottom of the lining. Nobody is going to really see it, but this just makes me happier. <laughs> so I'm going to sew up that opening mm -hmm. with the half inch oops, seam allowance. Mm -hmm. Stuff it back in through the pocket. And double check how it looks. See, and you would never ever know there was a hole in the bottom of the bag. And then you take the pocket, and because I had it all folded over, I have a nice edge to work with, and I top stitch that. And yes, that's visible, but it's inside the pocket, and you know what? You don't ever look at the bottom of a pocket. So that's why I choose to do it this way. back in so because of this way of turning all my bags always have a zipper pocket all of them regardless if they call for in the pattern or not oh my gosh look at it. it's perfect look at that so now the piping is really good it just it's such a pretty bag so I went ahead and I did my strap beforehand. Oops. So this one I'm doing a little different because I'm making this for my mom and she can't wear a purse on her shoulder. So I didn't do the adjustable strap with the swivel clips to, but if you did that, they would clip onto here. You'd be finished, you'd be good to go. Um, I'm just attaching mine like this just like I do on my other bags, folding it over. And I'm going to connect that with, a, a, whatchamacallit, a, um, oh my gosh, a rivet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera. But yeah, so hers is just an arm bag, so she won't be able to put it up on her shoulder. And that is done. So if you did like this video, I said this is the Chloe bag by Shambhala Designs. It's a brand new pattern. She has it out. I looked at the website. It's out in English, French, Dutch, and German, I believe. Um, I will put a link down in the description to where the pattern is. Um, yeah, uh, Shambhala is <clears throat> a great... Um, she just designs such pretty bags. So... Yeah, that's what this is and I hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed it and you haven't yet please subscribe please like hit the little bell icon so um, you get notifications when I have new tutorials anyways thanks so much everybody bye bye